Hello and welcome back to the video pills series. I'm Ricardo Agostini and today we will talk about frosting. If you like the content, remember to like and subscribe. Okay, let's talk about frosting, since this is a, a very common topic. I picked up this Space Marine to, to show something. Uh, I don't know if I can make it focus, mm, maybe not. But there is a little bit of paint here with frosting, both sides. This side is, uh, is even more visible, but I will paint on top of it. What it is frosting is when paint will separate and give a whitish appearance on the model and um, it dries unevenly so right now i'm trying with a um, red oxide that is a common color to to get frosting and i will i will show you how it is how to fix it, what to do, and how to better paint. Because <laughs> this this is more common than, than I really thought. The explanation is actually extremely easy to to give. So stay tuned <laughs> and let's wait until this dries. Okay. Um, as you can see, it's dried and the appearance is uneven and a little bit whitish. Mm, it could have been worse, actually. This is not, mm, not the worst ever, but it will suffice for, a, for an explanation. The reason why you see this uneven thing and these streaks and the whitish appearance that is Mm, very different from the color in the palette actually is because I am painting over a black glossy surface with a matte paint. This is the reason why you get this because the paint cannot mm, cannot stick to the model very well and since it doesn't stick it will separate a bit it will not behave as you think it would behave and it's a little bit uglier than expected. So how can you solve this? Well, there are several ways, but I'll show you a couple that are extremely easy. The first is cover the model with the airbrush, with Chimera colors or whatever colors. The airbrush will give a, a rough surface and the, the model will, uh, will behave as you expect at that point. So if you're used to do a zenithal lighting or a pre-shading with the airbrush or a mood with the airbrush, you will not encounter this problem. But if you are used to paint over black like this, the two things you can do are cover the, the model actually with Chimera black, that is matte. So I'll try it on this plate. So you cover it, so you will have a matter surface. I, I primed it with a glossy primer. So for example, if you have the Citadel gloss mm, cause black, we, you, will, uh, you will get a similar thing. So what I'm doing is making it matte with just our black. And this is one easy way. Another easy way would be um, using a, a medium that makes things matter. For example, and I will try this too, so you can see the AK Ultra Matte Varnish. So I will put it on the palette. So I'll make another surface matte and we'll see the difference. Okay, pick it up. Let's see, we do it on the, on this part of the leg. Yeah, let's be abundant. Okay. 
As you can see from the from the video already, the the part treated with the Chimera Black is already is already matter. So let's wait for the um, for everything to dry and let's do our try. Okay, now that it is mostly dry, we'll try with the um, red oxide. I do it very diluted because the problem is usually happening with a lot of dilution. So red oxide, very diluted on a matte surface. It will probably need a couple pass because it's very diluted. And on the leg that was treated with just uh, the matting agent. Let's see. Okay, I'll give it another pass for coverage since I <laughs> diluted it a lot just to show this is undiluted. Very different. Okay, let's wait a bit for it to dry and we'll check it back. As you can see, the coating is a lot more even than the one in the, in the shoulder. So this situation compared to this situation or this situation. <laughs> Here you can see with less dilution even how it is very even the coating. So this is a first approach on how to solve this problem. So you will avoid any frosting. There is no, no chance you get it if you paint over a matte surface. But let's say you are painting over a, a glossy surface for some reason and you need it glossy. How can you do it then? Well, there are a couple methods. So I will pick up another part of the model that is glossy. That could be using some additives if you if you like. First, you can mix your color with a glossy paint in itself because maybe you need that glossy part. This is especially true in skin tones. Maybe you need it more glossy, so you mix the Chimera colors with something more glossy. There are several ways of doing it. One way is uh, with the satin medium that is already in the basic box. And I'll show you another couple. One is the Josonia Magic Mix. I'll show you. This one will help a lot in blending and it is a little bit glossy, so will help with this problem too. So I'll pick the paint. I'll put the magic mix in it and then I apply it somewhere let's say here the the behavior is different it will also be very helpful for um, things like wet blending for example so you can do this and this will make the paint cover less this medium so be mindful another another trick is using the Winsor and Newton flow improver this one is matte it's not glossy and it's very interesting and it's very helpful to do glazing keeping the paint matte and avoid this problem if you have a, a glossy surface below so I'll pick some paint, pick the flow improver, it's already very liquid, and I'll use it somewhere, let's say here. Okay. The both of these will of course dilute the color and lower the, um, the covering. This is very helpful actually sometimes, uh, but sometimes it's not what you need. So you can resort to other methods. But in any case, I think 
I think this is good, the flowing brewer. I, I, I like it a lot, I have to say. It's a, it's a very useful uh, medium for, uh, for glazing and, and doing non-covering layers of stuff that you still want um, to, to have them matte. You know? Okay, let's wait for that one. I'll go to the, to the previous one and do a second layer because it didn't cover enough. But it's okay, I mean, it's, it's not about perfection. It's just about showing the, the situation here. But as you, can, uh, as you can see, in both these cases, oh, it's visible, there is no frosting. There is no, no frosting ever. So, well, here you have it. These are the, the two methods. I will wait for uh, for the magic mix to to dry. It's a it's a retarder, so it's normal that it takes so much. And I'll um, I'll do one final commentary on this situation. Okay, this is almost dry. It takes a while, mm, but it shows that it has a, an even coverage. It is a little bit glossy, but it will work. I want to um, tackle one, one last topic that is important in this, and is the value jump and covering with a transparent color. So if you, if you jump too much in value, meaning you try to paint with a very light color over a very dark color, you will get something that looks like frosting, but it is not really. For example, here I have the ultramarine blue from the expansion set. That is a transparent, is listed as transparent. So if you try to, to cover over black, you will have a situation like this. It doesn't really work. I don't think you will be able to, to see it. I'll try to, I'll try to put more of, of the color. The, the problem you will get in this is that you will get a thing that looks like frosting, but in reality it's not frosting. What you see is the pigment. The problem is being transparent, it will show a little bit of the pigment on the model but it will also show the black and you will see the huge difference in, uh, in, the, in the value. So it will look whitish, but it is not actually frosting. It is more that you are seeing the pigment itself. So now it should be visible this level of frosting. So in here you have both, both the situation that we were describing before, meaning the uneven um, coating of the paint because you have a glossy color underneath, you have a matte color over a transparent one and with a big difference in, uh, in value. So I think, yes, I think you can see the problem clearly right now. So what do you do to solve this? Well, first of all, you shouldn't <laughs> try to, to glaze a transparent color with such a huge difference in uh, value. Glazes usually are used to darken stuff more than make them more light. So this is the first issue in here. It is a, 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 real, a real problem. Second, there is the, the glossy surface situation from before. So honestly, if, the, if, if, you, if you solve it by making the surface more, more matte in some way, or the paint more glossy, you will already achieve a better result in this, whatever you prefer. So I try to make matte that little part. I will make glossy this other. So we can do a little try, but still it will not solve everything for you, this thing. This is why I'm telling you. So now we have this gloss situation. I will put it here. And you'll see that it's not going to, to work perfectly well. 
what you will do to solve this, and for example, I have an orange to, to show on the palette, is to try not to do these big jumps. By the way, you're already making the the um, shoulder matter, well, not the shoulder, this part matter is already better, but okay, it's, a, it's just an explanation. So now I will do a second coat, since the surface is matter, so we will see less separation. But the white you are seeing is not actually white, it was the ultramarine blue. The color of the ultramarine blue is, is that over black, you'll see it in that way. You know, so okay, I'll cover a little bit, but I repeat, this will not solve the problem. It will make it better, but not solve it. And keep going in the in the leg. And since this thing will take a while to <laughs> to dry, I'll do it off cam, so it will be faster for you. So now that it's dry, you can see a little bit more the shoulder that is not good, but better. The leg is almost invisible, but I assure you it's, it's there and it's, um, it has a better um, coverage, let's say less streaking because it's a, it's a gloss on gloss and gloss will remove texture from you. Remember this, if you have all problems like grainy texture that you see, gloss is your solution most of the time. If you, if you are not able to solve it in other ways, because it takes a little bit of practice. I also did another thing on the shoulder. I put orange and this orange will, will not cover very well over black. So it has the same problem as the blue. So I was trying to, since I have a brown color to show you that if you have this situation, you can just, if you want orange. Pick the orange, I'm using the, the flow improver if you want to do glazes, and put it over um, a lighter color. Don't do it over black because it makes no sense. It's a little bit transparent as a color, even if it covers a lot, this one, for being an orange, but you should use it over lighter color, over whites, over uh, pinks, over, uh, over browns, depending on the, the effect you want. So now I'll try over brown to to have a, a better a better effect and you'll see it so it's already showing much better than the shoulder <laughs> as you can see I need to wait for it to dry but in any case it is much better when you want to apply a light color to do it over a lighter, a lighter color than a, than a very dark one. So doing orange over black is a pretty bad decision in general. And since we are here, it is, it is good to, to show it over other other surfaces. Okay. I'm applying it in uh, in some layers because the covering before wasn't completely perfect. I didn't, I didn't spend too much time doing it. But okay, as you can see the orange now shows and it's very different from the shoulder. And a similar thing you can apply with this ultramarine blue that is a very light color actually, it's not, not too dark, you know? So I hope this example helps you because most of the time when I see frosting, it is because of this too big value jump. So this way of painting should should really help you out.
And since you stayed with me until now, I'll give you a, a cute trick to do a covering orange very fast. So if you pick up red, you mix it with white. You get a pink and pink will color very fast. Give me a moment to dry. And yeah, let's cover a little bit better. This is just an example, so it's to it's to show you a little neat neat trick. Okay, so now the pink is dry and the trick is you take a warm yellow and you glaze it on top of the pink and you get a bright orange because of course yellow plus red equal to orange so in this way you can literally spray miniatures with pink that covers way better than orange and then then do an orange by just glazing yellow and that's it, it's done. So it's very strong, very, very bright, and it will work. Okay, I hope this was helpful, but there is one last thing I want to talk to you about because I couldn't really show it in the camera. And it is about frosting when you try to, to do glazes or washes in the recesses of the miniatures for shadows. Remember this, if you try to do this thing with a matte color, it is very difficult and, and it's not advisable because you will get a little bit of separation with the matting agent and you will see sometimes whitish color in shadows. And this is not good, of course, this is not what you want. Um, my suggestion in this is always do this type of thing with shiny color, glossy colors, like inks or heavy bodies, or putting a, um, a medium that makes the color more shiny, like the Sabine medium or other brands that make the color shiny, and then do the washing the recesses, because if you do it with a matte color, it will not really work in this way you need to, to do it in a more controlled way and not with a wash or a, or a base. I hope this is helpful and if you have any question there is the comment section below and see you in the next video. Bye!